Illinois State Police responding to the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules and their objection that they filed against those gun ban registration rules. Welcome back, Bishop on Air with you each and every weekday morning. Like, subscribe, hit that notification bell, and uh, be sure to follow along with me on all social media platforms. Best place to do it is X, which is much more immediate. Of course, we had a, you know, the social media, uh, you know, uh, down yesterday. I think Facebook was down for a clip. I didn't really realize it because I'm not on Facebook all day. Uh, but regardless, just search any of the social media companies and you'll be able to find me, Bishop on Air. But like, subscribe, hit that notification bell here on YouTube as well and join us each and every weekday morning. So yesterday, uh, the Illinois legislature did not have the House Judiciary Criminal Committee with a whole bunch of gun legislation. If they did, we would be talking about that right now. However, we've got something else. Illinois State Police uh, Director Brendan Kelly responding to the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules in their objection that they officially filed. And if you recall, uh, the whole saga of the uh, state's gun ban being enacted January 10th of 2023. The lawsuits that followed, we've tracked that. But we also tracked the rules making process. So when the government, the legislature passes a law, it typically comes with administrative rule making. So they pass the law to say these are the definitions and then they hand it to the uh, administration, in this case, Illinois State Police, who then have to craft administrative rules to execute the law. Uh, sometimes there's a lot of questions about definitions or how things are to be interpreted or, you know, are they crafting law with rulemaking rather than just sticking to the law in their rulemaking? So a lot of questions there. And if you recall, uh, there was confusion and uh, some some uh, looming misunderstandings of what the definitions were in the Protect Illinois Communities Act, even down to what is an assault weapon. Uh, so you've got uh, questions about <laughs> different components of firearms and whether they were going to be regulated and, you know, even whether or not um, people had to regulate their magazines because you had uh, mixed messaging uh, when it comes to the, the, the registration requirements. Again, the registration requirements was supposed to be fulfilled by December 31st of 2023. Here we are, March, what, 6th of 2024, uh, and looking at the most recent data that Illinois State Police have compiled for the gun registry. They have not updated it. Uh, so these are a, a refresh of today. Uh, the last numbers they provided were from January 31st, a full month after the deadline of December 31st. And they have not updated them since. And here we are now into March. So uh, interesting. But if you recall, a couple of weeks ago, the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules, the legislative oversight body for the rulemaking process, uh, they uh, they officially objected to the rules. Uh, now, that didn't block the rules from being implemented, but it was an official objection logged into the record, and Illinois State Police were required to respond uh, within a set number of days. And this came after the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules uh, ordered state police to hold three public hearings across the state. Uh, and if you go back to my channel, you can see those public hearings and overviews of what was discussed and asked and answered. Uh, but still, even after that, there were a lot of unanswered questions. Uh, but Illinois State Police Director Brendan Kelly uh, filing in the Illinois Register, which if you're not familiar with what the Illinois Register is, it's essentially what you read every night when you go to bed, right? Uh, no, it's thousands of pages every year that are printed about, you know, public notice of state government actions, uh, rules that are being filed, proposed rules, emergency rules. If the governor issues a an executive order, for instance, it gets published in the Illinois Register. It's real dense. It's a lot of reading. It's thousands and thousands and thousands of pages. For instance, this one right here on uh, page 2991 of the eighth issue this year of the Illinois Register. Again, it's the eighth issue this year. They're already at 3,000 pages plus. Uh, but uh, it has here, uh, Agency Illinois State Police, Firearm Owner Identification Card Act. And it says at the meeting on January 16th, 2024, and we covered this, uh, the Joint Committee on Administrative Rules objected to the Illinois State Police proposed rulemaking title, Firearm Owner Identification Card Rule. Because the rulemaking does not meet the criteria under state law, which requires a rule to be simple and clear so that the rule can be understood by the persons and groups the rule affects and the rule contains definitions that are subject and open to broad interpretation by enforcement jurisdictions, 
which leaves the regulated public without clear direction on how to comply with the rule. So uh, it went on, uh, and this is a response from Brendan Kelly, uh, the Illinois State Police Director. Uh, he talked about uh, the committee's points and the rulemaking doesn't meet the criteria, uh, which requires a rule to be simple and clear so that the rule can be understood by the persons and groups the rule affects. The department disagrees, Director Kelly says. Illinois State Police took extensive steps to make the rule as simple and clear as possible so it could be understood by the persons and groups the rule affects within the language of the law, including but not limited to holding no less than three public hearings in three different locations across the state, adding no less than 11 definitions to the proposed rulemaking, adding a detailed guide to the website, adding 78 frequently asked questions to its website, and answering and responding to hundreds of public comments questions during the rulemaking process. ISP staff are very transparent, he says, responsive and diligent. The Illinois State Police has received more positive feedback about its efforts and updates than negative since the first notice period ended. Second, the committee's point that the rule uh, contains definitions that are subjective to open, broad interpretation by enforcement agencies, thereby leaving the regulated public without clear direction on how to comply. The department also disagrees. The Illinois State Police reiterates that it took extensive steps to provide the regulated public with clear direction on how to comply. Again, Illinois State Police held no less than three public hearings in three different locations throughout the state, added no less than 11 definitions to the proposed rulemaking, and added a detailed guide to its website. Added 78 frequently asked questions to its website and answer responded hundreds of public comments. Essentially, he just said that in the paragraph above. Overall, the department has incorporated all suggestions requested by the committee except one change related to record retention and the constitutionality of the statute, which the committee acknowledged has never been addressed in prior rules. The department appreciates the input from JCAR stakeholders and the public in developing rules that it implemented in the act. So again, uh, you've got uh, Secretary of uh, the, the Illinois State Police Director Brendan Kelly uh, issuing this letter, and that's being filed in the uh, Illinois State Register. Uh, so... Uh, what's fascinating also is, uh, and I got to get a little bit more information on this, but I've got a, a preliminary report uh, that was shared with me about the economic impacts to local governments from uh, the prohibition of the sale of certain types of firearms with, you know, the ban from the Protect Illinois Communities Act. And uh, there's, yeah, essentially what this, this report does, and I'm going to get some reaction to it uh, at some point this week, if not today, I'll try to talk with uh, members of the Commission on Government Forecasting and Accountability, which apparently put this together. That's a uh, bipartisan joint group of state legislators that have economists report to them on things like pensions and tax receipts and whatnot. Uh, important group in a lot of reports if you want to know how uh, state dollars are performing, your tax dollars. Uh, but this report, it looks at um, the fiscal impacts that uh, uh, impact the states from changes in taxes collected for firearms and ammunition. Uh, distributed from the federal government. So apparently the federal government has some funds that they distribute to the state based off of firearm sales. Reduced revenues possible with uh, the, the banning of certain types of rifles and other different categories of firearms. And we're talking about potentially uh, millions of dollars in, in lost revenue. Uh, there's also the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service uh, with uh, some dollars that uh, are appropriated. And uh, is that being impacted? So again, I've got a, I, I've got a preliminary report here that I'm hoping to get more detail and more reaction to. Uh, but once we get this all shored up, I'll be sharing that with you as well. All right, it is Bishop on Air, uh, and it uh, looks like uh, other things happening across the country. You've got uh, Louisiana now being, what, the uh, 28th state to uh, allow for constitutional carry. Uh, let's see if we can pull up that map that uh, Firearm Policy Coalition uh, put together. Uh, on uh, Louisiana now uh, being the 28th states for permitless carry. Uh, as uh, Fox News reports, you've got uh, uh, the, the southern state uh, putting it on the books. A landmark victory, 28th state with constitutional carry on the books. Law-abiding citizens should never have to seek government permission to safeguard themselves and their families, according to uh, the governor who signed that law. Uh, if you look at the uh, the, the map that um, Firearm Policy Coalition put together, 28 states, permitless carry. Uh, and you can see that uh, Illinois is slowly being, uh, well, surrounded by permitless carry. What's uh, important to note is uh, Illinois was the last state to allow any kind of carrying of a firearm outside the home. 
permit or not. Uh, so we had to implement that because of lawsuits uh, that were filed, essentially saying that uh, the Second Amendment was being violated. Uh, so uh, Illinois, you've got states all around that are essentially constitutional carry, right? Permitless carry. Uh, I've heard people say that the Second Amendment is your permit to carry a firearm. But regardless, state policies differ, and that map uh, kind of shows you uh, how that uh, how that looks across the country. Uh, so just also wanted to give you that update as well here with Bishop on Air. Greatly appreciate you guys being here each and every weekday morning. Uh, follow along with Bishop on Air. Uh, go to bishoponair.com for more detail and links, uh, including how you can join the Discord chat. A lot of activity in there. I don't monitor it. <laughs> I'm not too busy to monitor a Discord channel, but a lot of people talk to each other there. And on Fridays, we typically open that up for you to join the conversation. So join Discord, and that's a way for you to interact with the show when we are live. And I know I'm live a little early this morning, but I uh, wanted to get some stuff out for you guys uh, before I have to skedaddle uh, and head off to work. So uh, appreciate it. Uh, and as always, stay tuned with more from Bishop on Air.